Hi guys, this is Megan from the blog WilsonHomestead.com and today I want to share with you guys some ideas of things you can do before you have your homestead. Do you have a homesteading bug but you are maybe still in an apartment or in the city and you really can't do anything? But there is some things you can do. I'm going to share with you some ways you can start and plan out your homestead while you're still in any situation that you're in. There's so many things that you can do before you're on a ton of land to start homesteading. When we first got married, we lived in an apartment for the first year, and I had grown up, I, for the last like five or more years of my life, I had lived on a homestead with my parents, and we raised meat, meat chickens, and Barbados sheep, and we had milk goats, and we had laying hens, and we raised pigs, and like all these different things. And so then when I was in the apartment, when we first got married, I had this really strong urge to start homesteading, but I didn't think I could. And then I started learning about all these things that really are homesteading, but that you can do in an apartment or anywhere that you are. So the first thing you can do is to educate yourself. Start reading everything that you can get your hands on about homesteading. Be it about gardening, orchards, making hay, all different types of farm animals, animals that complement each other, rotational grazing. You can start deciding what animals you would like to have on your farm. Which ones will you start out with? Make sure you are knowledgeable about what kind of feed that they'll need and minerals and supplements and all the things that different animals might need. It would also be a good idea to read up on purchasing land, dealing with wells, a septic tank, and housing options for property. Educate yourself on this enough so that when you go to buy your dream homestead, you know what you're looking for and what you're doing. The next thing is use the space you have to start homesteading now. If you have a really small backyard, you have a little space to garden or compost and probably even raise some sort of small livestock like chickens or rabbits or quail or even some miniature goats. I know that if you're in a city, it might be a little frowned upon to have like goats bleeding in your backyard, but rabbits are something that's really, really quiet. I think quail are too. So depending on where you are and how picky your neighbors are, you could find something that's extra quiet to have on your little homestead. If you're in an apartment, then you can do some container or vertical gardening. You can even do some countertop composting with a Bokashi bucket. Learn some homesteading skills. Canning, cheese making, sewing, cooking from scratch, fermenting things on your countertop, things like kefir and kombucha, and making sourdough bread. There is just a ton of things you can ferment and I'm totally obsessed with right now. You can learn how to make butter, make soap, make your own toothpaste. There is pretty much just no end to these amazing and practical skills that you could be learning now. And these skills are definitely going to help you out when you are when you are on your homestead. The next thing is to create a budget. Are you saving for your down payment on your dream homestead now? So that when something comes available or you're in a position where you could move, that you're able to actually buy something. What about money for fencing or animals or tools? Start saving now by creating a budget that allows for this, even if your homestead is years down the road. Find a homesteading mentor or several mentors. Find someone that is living the life that you want and ask them if you can help out on their homestead and learn about all the things that they're doing. They can teach you all about planting gardens and maintaining them and animal husbandry and they can probably even help you with a lot of the indoor skills like canning. This mentorship and having practice on someone else's homestead will give you a really big head start when you get your own. There are so many people who possess a wealth of knowledge about all of this stuff and why not try to glean some from them. And then my last tip is to decide where you want your dream homestead located. Do you know where you want to settle down? What areas do you like the best? What areas have the best homesteading land. I know around here that there's a lot of areas that have big areas of land, but they're really rocky, so they wouldn't be the best for gardening unless you're doing raised beds. There's other areas that have like the best pasture land, and rocky areas don't really make the greatest pasture land, as well as treat areas. Get established in the community as much as you can. You can go to farmers markets and meet all the different local farmers and learn where they're homesteading and growing things, and just make sure that it's the right place for you. Because once you start your homestead, you're going to want to stay there for a long time, especially once you have gardens planted. Animals are a little easier to move, but gardens, like you're, you built all these raised beds and you plant soil, and so you want to just make sure that you are where you want to be for more permanently. Whatever dream you have for your homestead, you can totally start now, and there's so many ways you can do it. So I hope that this was helpful for you guys or gave you some ideas of things you can do now. If you're interested in learning about any more of the skills that I've talked about, just follow along because I share all kinds of practical homesteading tips as well as like from scratch cooking and tons of recipes, so I hope you'll join along on our little homesteading journey. I hope you guys are having a great day. Bye.